Hello, so my name is Michael Mackey and the title of our project is the in vitro analysis of curcumin nanoparticles in hydrogel encapsulation. So myself, John, Laura and Megan have been working on this project as part of our final year research for the last number of months. A brief outline of our presentation. I will be introducing the reason why we are conducting this research. John will talk a bit about the hydrogel and nanocarrier technologies that are used in this project. Laura will talk about some of the lab experiments that we conducted. And finally, Megan will discuss some of our results and future perspectives. So the dreaded anterior cruciate ligament tear. This is an athlete's worst nightmare. The diagnosis comes with the need of surgical intervention to repair the ligament and any other collateral damage such as meniscus cartilage degradation that has occurred. In the US alone, there are over 400,000 ACL injuries each year and these require surgical intervention to restore physiological knee kinematics. So we can see some of the top sports stars such as Maria Sharapova, Henry Shefflin and uh, Simone Biles who have all suffered anterior cruciate ligament tears. However, I know you're all thinking that all of these athletes have returned to top level sport after the surgery and rehabilitation. So one very interesting statistic that we were um, that we were interested in was the fourfold increase in osteoarthritis in people who have ACL reconstructions compared to people who haven't. So osteoarthritis is the most common form of arthritis. It is associated with pro-inflammatory cytokines or messenger molecules that mediate the degradation of cartilage and osteophyte or bone formation. Osteoarthritis is a chronic condition and it can be severely debilitating. Because the integrity of the cartilage is lost over time, this can cause pain, stiffness and lack of mobility in the affected joint. So people who have had their ACLs reconstructed, obviously they have injured their ACL which leads to inflammation but the surgery also initiates inflammation. This inflammation is believed to be the cause of the remodeling of the knee to an osteoarthritic phenotype. So the question that we asked, is there a way to downregulate the inflammatory molecules that cause osteoarthritis? So curcumin is the primary active component of turmeric. It is traditionally used in Ayurvedic medicine, which dates back nearly 4,000 years. So today it is still used as a spice for food. So because people have been consuming it for thousands of years, it is safe in very high doses. But the main reason why we were interested in this molecule is because of its anti-inflammatory properties. So we were wondering, could this spice prevent osteoarthritis by modulating the pro-inflammatory response mediated by ACL trauma and surgery? The first issue that we had to overcome was its poor bioavailability. This means that it is rapidly metabolized once it is orally consumed, meaning its effect is diminished. I will now pass you over to John, who will discuss our solution. To synthesize the curcumin nanoparticles, a single emulsion solvent evaporation method was used. To create nanoparticles, the most important step is to create an oil and water emulsion, as can be seen in the figure. This emulsion consists of two phases, an oil phase and an aqueous phase. The oil phase consists of curcumin, a polymer polylactic acid, and the organic solvent dichloromethane. Encapsulation of nanoparticles in a polymer is becoming extremely popular, in the field of drug delivery systems, as they can offer a way of targeted delivery of a drug to a specific site of interest while also providing an excellent release rate. So essentially the curcumin is encapsulated in the polymer polylactic acid and the dichloromethane is used to dissolve this polymer. The aqueous phase, which consists of deionized water and sodium dodecyl sulfate, which acts as a surfactant. The role of the surfactant is to reduce the interfacial tension between the two phases. This oil and water emulsion is then broken down into nano droplets by application of an external energy using an ultrasonic disintegrator as can be seen in figure one. These nano droplets lead to nanoparticles once the organic solvent is evaporated. A yellow homogeneous solution containing curcumin nanoparticles can be seen in figure two. The next step was to incorporate this curcumin nanoparticle solution into a hydrogel. The hydrogel was synthesized using alginate and gelatin. The yellow curcumin nanoparticle solution was then incorporated into this alginate gelatin based hydrogel. The hydrogel was formulated by adding gelatin, the curcumin nanoparticle solution and alginate to the PBS buffer. A gel like solution was obtained as can be seen in figure one. 
This gel-like solution was then added to a mould, as can be seen in figure 2, and this hydrogel was then cross-linked using calcium chloride solution to obtain cross-linked hydrogels that could be used for testing. Final cross-linked hydrogels can be seen in figure 3. My name is Laura Dowling and I'm going to discuss the in vitro testing of the hydrogels. So upon receiving the curcumin encapsulated hydrogels from John, we created an experimental goal. And this was sim to simulate the immune system's response to the hydrogel and see if curcumin could control this response. This was done in vitro. And in vitro consists of tests completed outside of a living organism. Instead, these tests are confined to test tubes and petri dishes. So this often involves the use of a cell line. And to explain a cell line, it is a culture of cells that are grown from a singular cell, creating a culture with a uniform genetic makeup that can then proliferate or grow indefinitely. So this deems the cell line as immortalized. The cell line that we chose to work with was THP1, and it is an immortalized monocytic cell line derived from the blood of a leukemia patient. Um, monocytes were an important cell to test against the hydrogel because they play an important part in the activation of the immune system when an infection is detected. So our experimental approach. We incubated our THP1 cells with different hydrogel formulations for 24 hours. We then collected the supernatant, which is the liquid component where the cells were hypothesized to release pro-inflammatory molecules, also known as cytokines. We then proceeded to test the supernatant with certain assay kits to detect the presence of molecules that would indicate if the cells were stimulated by the hydrogels. So the presence of specific levels of cytokines such as TNF-alpha and IL-8 indicated pro-inflammatory pathways were activated and their decrease when exposed to higher concentrations of the curcumin encapsulation proves that curcumin has an anti-inflammatory effect and is not inhibited by the nanocarrier or the hydrogel. So also the dam regulation of LDH or lactic dehydrogenase indicates that curcumin can prevent any slight toxic effects caused by the hydrogels as LDH is released by damaged cells. I will now pass you on to Megan. Hi, my name is Megan and I will be talking to you about our in vitro analysis results. So first we looked at TNF-alpha, which is a tightly regulated molecule that is produced in response to pathogenic compounds or to damage related stresses. So in these experiments, we used LPS or lipopolysaccharide as a pathogenic compound to show the levels of cytokines produced in re response to it. As you can see in the graphs, the level of TNF-alpha produced over time is significantly reduced meaning less inflammation caused in the cells. What can also be noted is that the non-purified gels, which are shown in red, um, elicit a greater immune response, indicating they may be less suitable to the cells and therefore the body. Next, IL-8 was examined, which is another pro-inflammatory cytokine. The results shown here are less clear at showing curcumin's effects at its ability to decrease inflammation in the cells. This may be due to IL-8 being a more inducible cytokine than TNF-alpha, and therefore it is harder to directly inhibit with curcumin. But again, we can note the non-purified gels shown in red have a greater immune response, solidifying the uh, concept that they are less suitable to the body than purified gels. LDH stands for lactate dehydrogenase, which is an enzyme released from cells under cytotoxic conditions. Therefore, the lower the LDH levels, the more viable cells there is. In all three graphs shown, it is seen that levels of LDH are minuscule and not levels which are of concern. This shows that the hydrogels do not cause any cellular stress and are in fact inert. Lastly, one interesting thing that we found was that our cells caused a breakdown of the hydrogel to occur. This may be caused by the cells um, as they produce enzymes which are capable to break down gelatin within the hydrogel. So as you can see, the top image on the left shows an intact hydrogel prior to the addition of cells, whereas the bottom image 
uh, shows degradation of the hydrogel after 24 hours with the addition of cells in that well. Medicinal properties have been utilised to solve medical ailments for generations and remain an essential key to uncovering many potential bioactive molecules that can serve as possible drugs in future drug discovery prospects. If this research proves effective, it will create a novel way to increase curcumin's bioavailability and prevent it from being rapidly metabolised in the body so it can have a longer, more sustained effect uh, in the human body. It will also show an effective way to treat patients with ACL tears, osteoarthritis and autoimmune disease who frequently suffer from high levels of inflammation and early onset arthritis, poor bone growth um, and pain. To conclude, from this research we were able to create a new drug delivery system which encapsulates curcumin within a hydrogel we were able to simulate the immune response to the hydrogels using THB1 cells to show that they are in fact inert. And we were able to modulate the immune response by the controlled release of curcumin and thereby reducing the levels of inflammation. Thank you very much for listening. I hope you enjoyed our talk.